Welcome back to another episode of Vintage Fly Tying. Today we're going to be tying a hare's ear wet fly. This is something my father had tied 50 years ago. What's unique about this is how the wings lay. And it is tied with duck quill that is uh, a little different than a duck quill I can find today. I still have the original feather that he tied it with, but it is down to just a couple little snips. So I'm not really using it. What I did, I went out and first searched the fly shops in the area, searched the craft stores, really can't find anything as comparable. I found duck quill, but I just can't find it as good as this feather was. This feather was definitely it's more like a shell back which you see here than a wing casing. It uh, it is really uh, unique. So with that said we're going to try to uh, replicate it. What I have here is I found some nice black duck quill but it's just not quite as hard as the other so but we'll uh, we'll try to make it work what we have in the vise is a saber number 12 standard dry fly hook I know it's a wet fly but this works the best and traditionally this fly was tied on a dry fly hook the thread we're going to be using is the 75 denier Royal Sissy, S-I-S-S-I, -S -S I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing it right as always, but we'll find out eventually. Let's snip the tag end off. And wrap it back to about the top of the bend of the hook. And back up. What uh, we are going to use for the tail is this Coq de Leon. It's actually a pretty, uh, pretty nice feather. I got a whole cape of it or saddle, I guess you would call it a saddle. The original recipe says, uh, let me see, tail, brown hackle barbells, which these are pretty brown. And he wanted it to be about the same length as the shank of the hook. So I'll go ahead and tie that in. I like to pull it my way just a little bit as I'm tying it in. Thread's pushing it, I'm pulling it, and it ends out even. Okay. Go ahead and cut the excess away. I got that one little extra. Must have come out a little bit. Take care of that. That looks pretty good, huh? All right. So, from here we want to add a little of this gold tinsel. This will be a ribbing. Take it all the way back to the where you began your tail at. Snip that away right there. And for the abdomen, we're going to have off a of hair's mask. Been using the forehead area that is right below the ears. You can see a nice little bald spot there that I've been digging into. About the right color that I matched up with his original fly. On his uh, recipe it says uh, body. Rabbit mask guard hairs left in very rough. And I matched up the color and that's about the section of the mask that I have. It is right below the ears, right on the forehead. So I'm going to snip off a little bit. You really don't want to have a, a thick body on this. Nice thin dubbing 
noodle is what you want. So go ahead, take your dubbing wax. Wrap that back just a little bit. And just dab the thread a little bit. Not too much wax. All you want to do is stick the rabbit fur that you just snipped off onto it. Just about like that. And I got a little Dixie cup here with some water in it. I like to wet my fingers so that I'm not always constantly licking my fingers doing this. You can go ahead and spin your hair onto your thread nice and thin. And there you go. Go ahead and make a few wraps. You want it to go up about three quarters up the hook shank. Oops. Looking pretty good. Alright, that's about right there. And go ahead and take your gold tinsel. And about five wraps is what it takes from here. Go ahead and tie that in. Okay, you can go ahead and cut that piece of tinsel away. Now for the thorax, it says here uh, the hackle is what he would be calling the thorax area, is hairs, ear, fur, throat. So, off the same mask, trying to match up what he had done, I've been digging the hole right on the cheek. Actually right below, uh, right below the ears, right next to the eye socket there. And that kind of matches up what he has for the uh, thorax area. So go ahead and snip a little bit off of there. And I like to mix this around a little bit. Because now you have a lot of those scar hairs in there. A little bit of this uh, dubbing wax. Go ahead and stick that to it. Put your finger a little bit, just enough to get a good grip on it, and go ahead and wrap that in there. See the difference in the color? That actually looks pretty good, huh? Alright, from now, from here you're going to go ahead and take the two wings that you got selected. This uh, pack came with four matched wings or two two pairs of matched wings and I took the two that matched the best. The other two were just maybe a little ragged. I had a really hard time finding some good duck. I don't know, maybe you guys have a better source of finding duck. I hated to order off the internet because without actually seeing it I'm sure I would have been disappointed so we're going to deal with these feathers here. We're going to make them work. So what I do is I'm going to take about oh, maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch snip it off of this little feather here and I'm going to do that to each one. What I'm going to end up with is two wings that are matched on either side. So let me just take a couple snips here. Now these wings have a dull side and a shiny side. 
So what you want to do is take the shiny side of one of them and lay it in the palm of your hand face down and the shiny side of the other one lay it on top of it. So you have both shiny sides facing out. And I found it really helps to use a pair of tweezers. I got these nice tweezers here that uh, had them around the house for years. They just happen to be good for a fly tying. They've got nice and flat. See how nice and flat those tweezers are? They hold things nice. So now I got uh, the wings lined up pretty good here. Sometimes it takes a couple attempts to do this, which you know, a lot of guys don't tie wings like this anymore. You hardly ever see them. Everyone's tying uh, the uh, Euro Nymphs. So now you got uh, some wings lined up. And what you want to do is tie them right to where the tail begins. Set them right on top and pinch them real hard. Take your thread, place it in between the fingers and let it come down nice and easy. Wrap under and now you're holding your thread straight up. You can see my bob my bobbin there and you want to pull straight up. Give it a wrap two wraps and stop right there. Now you want to check the wings. See how they come out. Actually looks pretty good, huh? And that one's a little higher than the other. And wrap them down. That should be pretty good there. Good, pull the uh, excess up and wrap behind the, uh, the hook. And you're going to go ahead and cut that out. And go ahead and tie it in there. Build up a little head. Give that one more wrap down there to hold that down just a little bit. There we go. Alright, so go ahead and we'll finish. Cut your thread away. See how it looks on your side. It looks playing down pretty good. As I said, this uh, these wings are just a little softer than I what my father tied with, so they're really tough to get them to lay down flat like that. But that's pretty close. That's about what he did right there. And take your Sally Hansons, wherever it is. And seal up your thread. Okay, so there you have it. You have a hare's ear wet fly. Very similar to what my father had tied 50 years ago. You notice the wings don't stick up like you see on a lot of uh, fly patterns. Of today they kind of stick down. I wish they would have stuck down a little better, but it's pretty good, pretty close what he did. All right, if you uh, like this video, please give me a, a like and a subscribe. Let me know what you like about it. If you don't like about it, or if you don't like it, tell me why you don't like it. It's pretty, uh, pretty close, I think, to what he died. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next one. 
Appreciate it.